Um, the last time before that, that I did it was just after the meeting when we were walking home from the church. Um, and the last time I did it before that was when we were at non such park for the park run. No, you prayed with me. As well? Uh, uh, oh, at church, but I'm talking, yeah, you're right. Okay, right, so that's one. But what? what with me on some dance. That's <laughs> <some> dance. <laughs> Is anybody here not being prayed for by me? <laughs> what I'm actually saying to you is this. We all have meetings given by God. And sometimes we need to be just a bit more proactive to take them. Because actually, God will use you. You don't have to be... You don't have to pray amazing prayers. Mm. You just have to let the love of God mm. out. He'll do the job because he is in you. Mm. So I'm just, I just wanted to encourage you to see that what you just done with your brother or your sister, you could do tomorrow with your neighbor or with the person you meet in the street. Uh, just a few little I, I liked stories I don't know about you I, I, I'll try to be good and not tell stupid ones uh, Alan and Christine have been very gracious whilst I've been staying with them um, and if you want to know how silly I am just talk to them they'll tell you but uh, I left my I have a walking stick now what I'm doing running around a non-such park if I need a walking stick you might wonder I <clears throat> when I get tired I get kind of a bit wobbly and and so anyway um sorry uh, so I left my walking stick in Exeter by mistake when I was staying in Exeter then I went to Taunton and the folks I was staying with in Taunton uh where I used to be um in a church there and the lady that I was staying with was actually a French lady who is Jackie's and my uh, unofficial adopted daughter. I'm putting the, the details in. But anyway, I went with uh, Matt, the, her husband, to Taunton before catching my bus up to Epsom. And we went, I thought, well, I'll get a stick from a charity shop because I've got one at home and I've got one in Exeter. I don't need that many sticks. <laughs> So I'll get one in the charity shop, good recycling and all that kind of thing. Anyway, I did actually find one in the charity shop, but it's a new one. So the recycling thing went out the window. Um, we're just going out of the shop and we bumped into a lady that Matt knew. And it was just a God appointment. We talked with her and I just said to her, would you like us to pray with you? And God just touched that dear woman's mm -hmm. heart, you know, and... All right, we did move out of the doorway a bit so that people could come in and out. But um, you and I are carrying something. Is that right? Yeah. And, and it's something that everybody that we meet needs, but they just don't know it. I said to somebody just now um, that love is more contagious than COVID. <laughs> the difference is that with COVID you don't have a choice, but with love you have a choice. Um, so carry the, not the disease, carry the contagion. The contagion all right, that'll do. It still sounds a little bit on the uh, carry it with you, and be wet, be expect God to give you opportunities. Did you see? When we went for the non touch I didn't tell Anne and Christine, but I said to the Lord, Lord, you've got somebody for me to talk to, to pray with. And I was expecting it. Um, I, I'm expecting it all the time. You get used to it. Get used to it because you've got the love of God in you. OK, that's just an encouragement. Um, Colossians, if you want to read your Bible or your telephone or the back of your hand, whatever. Paul the Apostle writing to the Colossians, chapter 1, verse 24. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking 
in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. Um, excuse me, but that's us. <clears throat> to them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, I, I often say, I add a word in there, only. Christ in you, the only hope of glory, because I know that there is, there's no hope of glory for us outside of him. But listen, it's been revealed to his saints. Christ in you. I... I I think I said this morning that the, the, the goal of my life is to carry the presence of Jesus to everyone I meet. Um, and I spoke with these dear ladies outside St. Barnabas Church, one of whom is actually a, a pastor. Um, so we actually, we had a really, it was, that was a bit of a surprise to me. We had a really wonderful time and we ended up praying for each other. So, so the, I, I, I met my match. <laughs> um, but she said, um, it's not, because uh, I, I, I said, you know, that, that carrying the presence of the Lord to everyone I meet was, was the goal of my life. I don't mean a goal that I'm aiming at. I mean, the purpose that I live for, because actually it's happening now. But she picked up on the fact that I'd say goal and said, no, it's not a goal, it's a reality. It's on that track. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm not going to start speaking French. You, can, you, you, you Unless you interpret for me. For raison d'etre is your reason for being. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's <laughs> silly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're good, brother. <laughs> Amen. So if anyone wants any lessons in French, let me introduce um, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> um, okay. Christ in you. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about Christianity. We're not talking about religion. We're not talking about doctrine. We're not talking about... Um, the the way we do things we're actually talking about a person who lives by his spirit inside of every believer every saint and you know the word saint means sanctified one and it doesn't mean that i don't do things on sunday like cutting the lawn or anything like that um, excuse me. Um, it doesn't mean to say that I don't eat chocolate or, or that I don't have a glass of wine. We, I live in France. Okay. I have a glass of wine. <laughs> uh, sometimes do when I'm not in France, but I don't. I don't do more than that. So you're okay. Um, that's not what we're talking about. It's not an outward thing. It's mm -hmm. being a saint is actually not to do with. Oh, I feel so holy. It's to do with, I belong to him. If you belong to him, he belongs to you. You are separated to him. And the, the yeah, the purpose for which you live, the raison d'etre for your life is to carry that and impart it to men and women. I want to change tack just a moment because I, I told him, um, Alan and Christina's story, um, which happened about 35 years ago. Um, and I've not told it to anybody since until I think it was last night, wasn't it? And I just felt, do you know, there's something there we can learn from. And I want to just share. I was, when we left Epsom, 
which was 79, so what, do the maths yourself. Yes. Um, we went to Broadstone for a, a couple of years and joined uh, with Pete Davey in the church there. And at that time, I was building relationships with folks in North Somerset, South Dorset. And we eventually moved up there and started a little church. One of the ladies in the church, in fact, it was a couple who uh, God just put on our hearts. And they were the real reason why we moved house, just so that we could bless this couple. Um, but God used it to start the church. And this lady had had an experience. Her daughter was, oh, I suppose in her late teens and her son in his early teens. But she'd had another child years before and she'd never told anybody. The story was this, that she was pregnant with this child and she was unwell and had to go into hospital. And while she was in the hospital, a nurse came into her room and she swung a pendulum over her womb while she was laying on the bed. She couldn't do anything about it. And she lost the baby. And she spent 20 odd, 20, 25 years under the cloud that that brought into her life that she felt that the devil had robbed her of her baby. And I, she actually, she became ill. And I went to see her and pray for her and God healed her miraculously and instantaneously. And she just broke and wept and wept because when she was healed, it cracked open this memory and she wept and wept and she started to tell me the story. And when she told me the story, God spoke to me. And he just said, I took that baby because I wouldn't let the baby be affected by that curse. Now that's shocking. That God would take a baby, but actually, anybody of whatever age that is with Jesus is always, as Paul the Apostle said, far better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so do you know what that did? The word of God that came into that lady's life released her from the curse that that person had put upon her life, and she was totally set free. Um, now, why am I telling the story? Because actually, God loved that lady. And God allowed Jackie and I to move house to be there. I mean, that's, that's kind of like fairly full on moving house for a couple. You know, you, it's, it's not just a little thing. Um, but, you know, if you're willing to give your life, God will give you people. And you might be surprised at what he will do. In fact, I will say, I will be surprised if you're not surprised. Is that, it's okay. <laughs> because he's excellent at doing things which are beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding. Um, did I say about asking and thinking this morning? No. Do you know it says in the scriptures that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. The problem with most of us is that we don't think right. Can you remember I said that actually I did say this morning, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, and although that was kind of kind of in a way a, ne a bit of a negative thing, it, it isn't actually negative because actually. If you begin to think that Jesus can use you, your level of expectation will start to rise. Dis disappointments happen. 
I pray for people that don't get healed. Sometimes. I never pray for people that don't get blessed, though. So I'm, I'll take what Jesus gives. Um, <clears throat> I do pray for people that get healed as well. Um, but that's not what I'm looking for, actually. Mm. I'm looking for God to touch people's lives with his love. And he will. If you'll let him. So let the expectation rise inside of you that, that he will use you. Um, when Mike and I were praying just now, um, <clears throat> and he very graciously didn't tell me off for um, not asking first before I suggested that we all pray for one another, because uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I realise that probably I should have asked him first or one of, or one of the other leaders. But um, when we were praying just now, I had a real sense that God is not finished with Epsom Christian Fellowship. Oh, no. And that there is future. Um, I, I really think that you're kind of like on the, just on the edge. And I think that's that's just what I sensed. It was it was just kind of one of those moments when you sort of feel that uh, that God is is it's a, it's a pregnant moment in the church. God is going to do something. So. Maybe what I'm saying is important in this, because mm. if I don't expect God to do something, um, I may not be disappointed. But if I'm expecting him to do something, I definitely won't be disappointed. God is bigger than me, bigger than you, bigger than my understanding. He might open the, the way in a totally different way than we're expecting. He might open doors that you never dreamt of. But he will do something when you allow him to do it. And you are the channel for his love. Every single one of us, you carry it. When I was born, I was born, by the way. Um, I was born with my parents' DNA in me. And the Bible says to me that I'm born again. And that you're born again. So spiritually, you have the DNA of your father in you. Now that changes everything. Because, you know, I, I see pictures of my dad and I think, gosh, I look like him. Uh, he was actually quite a handsome chap, by the way. Um, <laughs> And he, and he actually kept his hair until he was 90. So there you go. <laughs> um, I didn't look at anybody. <laughs> but you've got the DNA of your father in you. So what are you expecting? Are you expecting to be like somebody else? Because, you know, in one sense, as a man thinks in his heart, or I'll say as a woman thinks in her heart, because it's a generic thing here. Um, as you think in your heart, if you, if you think that you're going to be like Jesus and that you're going to carry Jesus to people, you will expect God to do it. It's not mind over matter. It's the Holy Spirit living in a regenerated being. And it works. I, I would just say that there's 2,000 years of history to prove that it works. Mm -hmm. um, just look around. The church is, 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 is amazing. I, I, I love the psalm. You, you gathered that this morning, Psalm 16, where it says, in your presence is fullness of joy. But I'm just keeping a finger in this one. I'm just going to read the first verses in that psalm. Uh, and uh, by the way, I don't know what I'm going to speak about this evening, so I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, it starts off, oh, my soul, you are said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Oh, no, sorry, it starts, I missed the first bit. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. Oh, my soul, you are said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. 
As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Brothers and sisters, the scripture says that the saints are the excellent ones. And the psalmist said, in whom is all my delight. I don't know whether it was the Lord really speaking. Because, you know, he delights in you and he delights in me. And what, I, what I've found, uh, the enemy is always trying to distract us. Mm. Oh, he doesn't distract you, you because you're you know, really super spiritual. But he tries to distract me quite often. Um, and one of the things I've found is that if I follow the scripture where it says whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, think on these things. And, I, and I've, I've thought for a long, long time that where else can I look to find those qualities but in the saints of God? And, I'm, and I spend a lot of my time thinking about the saints of God. And actually, it transfers into praying for my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, because there's a whole persecuted community <clears throat> in the church, in the world, I find that I spend a lot of my time just thinking of my brothers and sisters who are in situations where they can't meet like you and I are meeting now. The excellent ones, the ones in whom God delights, I delight in them too. <coughs> and, and I want to tell you this evening that I am delighted to be with you. And, I'm, and that's not some light thing I say it's such a privilege and a pleasure to be with people that just love Jesus with all their hearts it's fantastic that's mm -hmm. it's not unreal though um anyway that's I like that song and uh, so Christ in you and I'm just jumping down into chapter two for a moment in Colossians I said I would keep my finger in it and I've I have done. And I, I think uh, I don't want to talk for a long time, so I'm just going to cut in in verse six, if I may. Um, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through Philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. What are you? I'm deaf. <laughs> what are you so am i no, no i didn't write that who did god actually inspired the apostle to write to the colossian church to say look whatever's going on in your life whatever you're because i don't suppose that all the colossians were as you know all oh, holy saints i expect that they were just ordinary men and women like you and i with their difficulties and their problems <laughs> their cars didn't break down i'll give you that much but the rest of it they they, they they were like us and he says you are complete in him you have everything that you need in order to live for jesus it doesn't mean to say that your bank balance is full. It doesn't mean to say that you have no needs in your life. It doesn't even mean to say that you don't have the occasional sickness or that you, that you don't even have a permanent illness. The Apostle Paul gives us to understand that perhaps he carried a thorn in the flesh in the, in, in the, the form of a, 
a, a, a, a malady. We don't know oh, that's French, isn't it? An illness which he didn't really define. But he says to them, you are complete in him. So either he was right or he was wrong. I choose to believe God is right. And I choose to believe that if I am complete in him, then there is, okay, I, I need him every day. Actually, I need to be filled with his Holy Spirit every day. I don't mean to say that I'm empty when I get up in the morning and unless he fills me, I'm dead. Uh, what I mean is that I, I am so dependent upon him that I can't live this life without him filling me continually and neither can anybody else. I, I, I'm not and you are not Superman or Superwoman. Even though sometimes we may think we are, we are not. We are 100% dependent upon the momentary filling of the Holy Spirit. But actually, we have the promise that he will fill us. And we can live with that promise. And we can put that not to the test in, oh, I'm going to test the Lord. But we can put it into practice, knowing that he will not fail us. And Sometimes we do things and they do go wrong. What do you do when something goes wrong? Do you say, oh, God, you've let me down? Mm. Actually, he doesn't do that. But there are times when he says, look, I, I just need to teach you something. And so something seems to go awry. And what we do then is we come back to him and we say, Lord, just... I need you. Show me. Speak to me. He is very, very good at doing that. He's, an, he's excellent at doing it, in fact. So, so what are we going to do? Are we going to say, oh, that's a bit much, isn't it? I can't do this. Or are we going to say, Lord, in spite of what I feel like, and in spite of my experience in the past, I'm going to take you at your word. I'm going to give myself to you and I'm going to let you live through me. I, I, I know that he can do that. Um, I don't think that I'm any, in fact, I, I sometimes think I'm not as successful as most preachers. I mean, that, that most preachers can preach a good sermon and I don't seem to quite get there. You know, it's, I usually interrupt myself and, and don't really get there. Um, and I'm not really, when you look at all these sort of really, you know, gifted people, I don't think I'm particularly gifted. But I tell you, Jesus, he can do it. In yeah, in, in every single one of us. You don't have to be gifted. I know that everyone else has a gift. You've got a gift. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you know you've got a gift? In fact, you are a gift. Mm -hmm. You're a gift. You're a gift to the church. Mm -hmm. The saints the excellent ones. Mm -hmm. You're a gift to the church. Every one of us is a gift to the church. Mm -hmm. But God will give you to people too. And I, I, I don't have the time. I could tell you ever so many stories of how, because I, I can't do it, but he can. He just allows me into somebody's life and touch somebody's life. Maybe for an instant, maybe over years, doesn't really matter. But to carry his love, to change someone's life, he'll give you if you'll let him. Is that all right? Will you let him? Don't be afraid to, because he is a big God. And the, and the, and the, the thing is that when you allow Jesus to, to live in you, 
okay, it's open warfare. Mm? Uh, there's somebody who doesn't want you to live for Jesus. And okay, so it's open warfare. But he that is within you is greater than he that is within in the world. And so you already, who is it who prayed this morning about that we're, or said, was it you? We're already victor, we're, we're victorious. I can't remember. Maybe it was that brother that shared. Mike Cobbs. Yeah, Mike, Mike Cobbs, is it? Yeah. He said, yeah. But it's right. You're more than a conqueror. That's pretty, pretty wonderful. I, I, what can I say? I, actually, I think that I'm talking to people who know everything already. You know it. You do know it. But the person who you meet tomorrow doesn't. And you may be the only person they ever meet that does know it. And you've got such a big God that he is able. Now, we've got to learn how to operate in this, this thing. Uh, in one sense, uh, you know, the, the, there is the either. Do you want to say something? No. Oh, right. I thought you hands up. Um, <laughs> but if you want to, it's just out there. Um, <laughs> my arm, all right. Okay. <laughs> um, what was I saying before Hugh interrupted me? <laughs> we were saying you've got such a big God. Well, that's big that's. God. Yeah, big God. Yeah, that is C, wonderful. Thank you. Karen, yeah, thank you. Um, hi, Amy. <coughs> We've got such a big God, but we need to learn how to, to operate in, in, in the way that God wants to move through me, through you. you, you're not me, you're not Bill Cheney, you can't be Bill Cheney. Thank God you can't be, because one's enough. Um, and all the people said amen. Um, <laughs> but I can't be Karen. Well, I can't be Tim. I can't be Neil. Only Neil can be Neil. <laughs> I seem to, either I said the right thing or I'm putting my foot in it right, left and center and I'm not quite sure which <laughs> you are unique in the, all the, the excellent ones that are in the earth they're all unique and that's, that's what I'm, I'm banging the same drum that I was banging this morning I, I think am I, am I going on too much or something you know, he has promised to live in you, Christ in you, so you're not going to fail. You're not going to fail if you trust him. But he will be Jesus in you, in you, not Jesus in me, in you, or Jesus in her, in you. He will be Jesus in you. And that is what will touch other people. Did you want to? I did want to say something. something. Come on, preach. So <laughs> just, um, I remember as a child learning about fingerprints and DNA and that we each have a unique fingerprint. And I remember that piece of information just blowing me away. Mm. The fact that there are, mm. what, seven, eight mm. billion of us and no two alike. Fingerprints are mm -hmm. absolutely unique. Mm -hmm. I yes, just, I still yeah. find that information. Yeah. Okay, take that on board. Take that on board. <laughs> oh, but everything they say about you was right. <laughs> um. Every snowflake is different. Fortunately, we're not flaky people. But, um, yeah. um, but do you do you really, really believe that Jesus will live in you to the extent that He will touch the people that you live with? 
because you know it could be revolutionary if we start practicing that mm. how can i do that then it starts with loving them unconditionally mm. how did god reach me mm. he reached me through unconditional love mm. it wasn't when i got right that he loved me it was when i was wrong that he loved me mm. and sometimes we we unconsciously we've put up kind of expectations on people um and they've got to come to them and actually god didn't do that with me and he won't do that with them he'll just love unconditionally and if you let him he'll do it through you all right it's wonderful really isn't it i can't think that there is anything better in the universe than to be filled with god's love mm. and then to just mm. kind of be porous and let it leak out mm. to touch people sometimes i think i might have said this morning sometimes you use words mm. sometimes you don't mm. um actually that's okay you just love as i say it's contagious I went, I, I'm sure I told Alan and Christine this, but I went to a hospital one time. I was actually chaplain in a geriatric hospital. And I walked in uh, as a chaplain. I, I would go from room to room and I would say, hi, I'm the pre-church chaplain. Would you like me to spend a bit of time and chat? And, and I would pray with people. And um, most of the people that I led to the Lord died soon afterwards um so that's not a high recommendation for <laughs> my ministry <laughs> but, uh, but i walked into one guy's room and i said hi i'm the uh i'm the free church chaplain i wonder if you'd like me to just spend a bit of time with you or something like that and he said uh, i've got no time for god He'd recently lost his wife and it had, I think he'd probably had diabetes, got gangrene in his leg and had his leg removed. So, yeah, he got a bit of baggage, I would say. Um, so I said, well, you know, OK, we won't talk about God. What, what would you like to talk about? He said, gardening. <laughs> so I went in every week and talked about gardening i never mentioned god at all and then one day i walked in and by this time we were on first name terms and he said bill will you pray for me you could have knocked me over with a feather gardening's an amazing tool <laughs> <laughs> to let the love of god touch a man who was totally totally against him and I prayed for him and he got saved. He got really saved. And he died three weeks later. So again, <laughs> same thing. But think if he hadn't, if he hadn't talked about gardening for weeks and weeks and weeks. You just, God will use you. God will use you. Because if you've got his love in you and you just will allow him to make you kind of poorer so that it leaks out it will touch the people that are around you yeah and actually you don't need to look for results that's god's responsibility so if it doesn't seem to be happening just keep loving because you know i i i said to i think it was again i mean we've been talking a lot so um if you're a link in a chain, you don't always know what the end result is. Mm. But there might be people in heaven because of you that you never knew that you touched. Mm. What about that? There might be souls that, that you just brushed against, that you touched with the love of God. And it was just a link in the chain that led them to, to come to know Jesus. So when you get to heaven, they might come up to you. I don't know what heaven's like, and I'm not quite sure about it or... But they might, you might have people that say, you are one of the reasons why I'm here. 
you're a porous carrier of the love of Jesus. And it will change people's lives. Okay? Isn't that good stuff? Um, what's the time? Um, I, I know that it's getting on, is it? Eight o'clock. Shall I stop then? No, um, don't stop. I just have to go and put my little one to bed. Because okay. <laughs> I will take my leave with Mum. Mariama. Yes. Good to see you. God bless you. God yeah. Bless you. Well, yeah. Good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Assalamu alaikum was the word, by the way. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. May peace be with you. Okay. So I'll That's nice. send it to Julie. Do you, do you have those ones? Okay. Right, well, okay. Right. Alan. Alan and Christine. Yeah. And you and with you, yeah, amen. Yeah. Pretty good. I'm not quite sure I can get my tongue around that, but I won't try now. Thank you. Um, okay, just yeah. Um, there's there's people. Do, 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 well, okay. Do you remember Abraham when he offered the tithes to Melchizedek? And it says of him that the children of Israel, Jacob's children, were all inside him when he offered that those tithes. Well, I don't know how that works, but I do know that there are people that are inside of you and me. Uh, we, we haven't really seen anything yet of what God can do through us, but you're carrying the potential of men and women to come into the love of God. So in, in a sense, you're like a, um, I did, that's not what I meant. Yeah. You're, you're like a, a, a seed carrier that's carrying the seeds of life. Okay. You are, I, I just tell you that, that that's what God is, is wanting to do in every single one of us. Mm. And I think I've finished really. I think I've said what I want to say. I could tell you stories all night long because uh, you know, I keep on meeting people and just things happen. It seems like that's what my life is about these days. But I think I don't want to talk anymore. I think what we did earlier when we when we prayed for each other, I think that we need to kind of do that more and more. I don't necessarily mean we're in a meeting and we pray for the person next to us, but I think we, we need to be brave enough and believe that what is in me, God can put in somebody else if I will just let it out. Mm. I'm going to stop with that, I think, because I think that's, that's the message that the Lord put on my heart actually for today really mm -hmm. i'm so excited uh to be here I, I i have actually said that i think i'm the most excitable person that i know virtually um <laughs> but i'm so excited that the excellent ones in epsom uh, that's you um are about to discover what it is to touch people with God's love in a new way, because mm. it's a new season, mm -hmm. it's a new day. We're on the cusp of something that is, is going to be glorious for his, mm. for his glory, for his name. Mm. So I, I think I'd just like to pray for the church, with, if mm. I may do that. Um, you're not too tired to stand, are you? No? All right, come on. Um, let's hold hands because that would that be all right? Yeah.
No. I, I bet that there are people here who are much better at praying than I am. And they said, Amen.